Alrighty. So, uh, today is, uh, we're drawing Love Life Craft. So, so, um, to explain that really quickly, in case you don't know, I have a series that I've got where I am drawing Lovecraftian, um, outer gods, um, as, uh, anime idol go girls. Uh, it all started when I drew some fan art of Cthulhu-chan, which was a, a figure that you can buy. It's not even an from an anime, it's just a, a figure <laughs> that you could purchase. And I, I thought she looked super cute, and it's evolved, and, and here we are. I'm on the fourth one now, uh, and this is interesting, because we're drawing our first Kohai. Because Cthulhu-chan would be a second year. Um, she- because I'm, I'm working with Love Life as kind of a base, and the, the protagonist girl is always- She's always like a second here, um, and I've only drawn Cthulhu-chan and Senpai so far. So there's Cthulhu, Nyarlathotep, and Yogg-Sothoth. And I was like, I want to draw a Kohai, I want to draw, draw a first year. Um, and so we've got Cthulhu today. So Cthulhu's name automatically like really caught my attention, because I was looking at the HP Lovecraft wiki uh, to, to find more good good outer gods and such to draw and so I found Cthulhu and that's great because I think she's super fun. <laughs> so Cthulhu is I think Cthulhu's child. They all seem to be related kind of um, but I'm not really working with that. Um, however that was a good excuse to make Cthulhu an underclassman in relation to Cthulhu-chan. Um, and Cthulhu is interesting because being related, question mark, to Cthulhu and with such a similar name to Cthulhu, you must think, oh, it's got to be similar to Cthulhu then, right? Like, it's another tentacle-faced, like, sea demon? Uh, no, uh, Cthulhu is a ball of fire and that's it. <laughs> Sometimes it's got a face, sometimes it's got tentacles, but more often than not it's just a scary ball of fire. Um, and I liked that. <laughs> so so drawing Cthulhu then was, was a really fun because I had such a simple I, concept to work with, to work around as well. Um, so so let's talk about her a little bit. So first you may have noticed that I really struggled with her hand because I made one fist clenched and I tried to do it with the other fist as well and then I decided, uh, fuck it, because <laughs> I was struggling with that and just made it open. Sometimes you just gotta decide that, to be like, that's too hard, who cares? Um, I really like the cape I've given her uh, because that kind of looks like the tentacles. Here's a pro tip for drawing like really loose fabric is to Really let your sketch be sloppy because the the ways that the sketch lines sort of overlap and interact can help sort of guide you into making very loose sort of flimsy material. And I'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the part where I'm, I'm drawing the, the, the cape actually. Um, so Cthulhu is a fireball and so the first thought I had was this really short fiery hair um because i know that often the 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 idea for fire themed characters especially girls is to give them long hair uh and you know i get that because you know long hair can look like long flames so i i, I understand but i guess because since Cthulhu is a ball <laughs> of fire um i got this really short hair vibe instead and i think it ends up looking super cute i really like how Cthulhu's hair turns out um and, and also this is exciting i'm gonna spoil the colors i make her pink because <laughs> um I, I, as always my initial thought for fire was you know red or orange but I've already used red on um, Nyarlathotep Senpai, and I didn't want to overlap too much with the colors. I'd like all the girls to look, um, to kind of have their own unique color palettes to sort of, you know, se separate them a little bit so they all stand out from each other. Um, here's me really struggling with skirts, by the way. N nailed it. <laughs> yeah, so I want her to have her own color palette, um, and so I was like, Okay, so what, what's a better color I can use for 
for um, for fire. And I thought, oh, well, maybe yellow, but I've got an idea for a different Lovecraftian figure using yellow. Um, so I didn't want to do that. And then I was like, duh, pink! <laughs> because also, I, I, I think she would be a pretty spunky, kind of energetic character. Fiery, if you will, <laughs> in personality. Um, and and the, the concept of pink plus being this really energetic and enthusiastic character. It just jived so well. Um, I'm so happy with the pink. It might be my favorite part of the character design is that I made her pink. <laughs> um, here we are to the cape. So let me explain this. So you can see that my rough sketch is very rough. It's basically just loose lines everywhere. Um, and and that's good because I wanted it to be really flowy and flapping around in a way. Um, I opted to give her a cape because because of the tentacles that Cthulhu sometimes has, and also it can help push the the fiery theme a little bit. I imagine they could like catch fire and and be really cool, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, like how I mentioned, I was able to use those sloppy lines in my sketch in order to create these folds in fabric. Once you learn how to draw, like, fabric overlapping, then your whole world will open up. <laughs> so, so practice that. You know, t study how fabric folds and you'll, you'll do great. I believe in you. What's happening right here is um, a waste of time. <laughs> I had the idea of making them look like um, um, jellyfish tentacles because I was like, you know, gotta pick a tentacle, right? You know, all these Lovecraftian monsters have tentacles and I don't want them all to just have like octopus tentacles like how Cthulhu-chan does. Um, but it wasn't working. I liked the, the sort of just like flat, um, limp, for lack of a better word, like flat, limp uh, look of the tentacles without the, the usual jelly fr jellyfish frillies along them. So I'll have to hold on to that idea. Uh, keep your eyes open because perhaps later down in the line we'll encounter another lo love live crafting girl who has some, some jellyfish tentacles. So yeah, anticipate that. I don't but don't, that's not a promise though, because <laughs> I don't know for sure if that idea will come back. That's another thing, by the way. Um, art, you can always reuse an idea. Even if you've, even if I had gone forward with the jellyfish tentacle idea, you can always reuse an idea. So don't feel like you have to do something you thought up now, because you might be able to use it better at a later time. Just, just a tip there. I really like her eyes. So one, I very rarely make these like light eyelashes and I think they always look super cool. So I'm happy with that. But also, um, so I gave her black sclera and then lighter pupils, which is the opposite of what it usually is. Usually your sclera is white. That's the white part of your eye. Um, and your pupils are black, duh. Um, and I reversed it for her because I wanted to imply the idea that she was like empty um, but filled with light, you know? Like, as if this human form that we're looking at is kind of more just like an empty shell that the the ball of fire entity kind of just resides within. Um, and uh, I love that. I love the concept and I like how it makes her eyes cool because I'm also a sucker for Black Scalera. This whole project, this Love Livecraft sort of adventure we're going down together. Um, it's basically just gonna be watch twins learn how to draw a bunch of really weird eyes. <laughs> so I hope you're excited for that. Oh, her color palette. So you'll see me kind of futz around with this teal color a little bit. Um, because I, had ki I came up with the design of the shirt and the skirt and everything um, first, and I knew I wanted her to have pink hair, and I figured orange would be an excellent accent color, um, but I realized I needed another color because I knew I wanted the skirt and bow to be there, and I didn't want it to just be pink and orange, pink and orange, pink and orange, because that would make her look really flat and boring. What I'm doing here, by the way, is I'm checking to see if I liked 
this shade of teal or if I would have liked a lighter shade. I picked the darker one because all of the other colors are lighter in tone. Like if you look at my triangle over here, I'll have an arrow. Um, they're all on the top of the triangle. The teal color is on the bottom. And so let me explain how I came to dark teal. <laughs> so I knew I needed an accent color. And so what I did is I looked at the shades we already had. So pink, a little darker pink, and orange. And they're all on this warm side of the color wheel. And so basically, I just went in the middle of them and went across the color wheel. That's called an analogous color? No. The ones next to each other are analogous. Across the wheel is a complementary. Um, this is important. I'm teaching you color theory right now. <laughs> um, so the reason why I did that is because since I've picked a teal color in the middle of my analogous colors, it will look good, good enough at least, with all three colors. They coexist. So that's, that's my hot tip, is if you need a tertiary color or, or a final accent color, do what I've done here and it'll work because this teal does work well enough with this pink and orange. Um, what I'm doing right now is struggling, <laughs> is another waste of time because um, I, I wanted the skirt to have a pattern on it, you know, to kind of help zhuzh up the, the design. Um, and I hated how this looked <laughs> and, and I, I futz about with how to make the skirt look good uh, for uh, too long. Um, I decide on just stripes. You'll see it. It's not these stripes. You'll see it. Um, so yeah. <laughs> That's another tip I can offer you. Don't be afraid to waste your time trying to make something look good because sometimes you just gotta fight with it until you find the right choice. Also, sometimes simple is best. You don't always have to be fancy with it. You don't always have to pick a gingham when just some simple stripes look great. Um, I also had struggled a bit with her cape. You may have seen that in my ranting about color theory. Because um, I couldn't figure out if I liked the pink on the inside or the orange on the inside. So that's another thing. Sometimes you just gotta like figure out your options and, and like s s take the time to see what you think look best. Here's me fighting with her hair. <laughs> I know I wanted it to look like fire. Um, and I was just trying to figure out how I wanted it to look like fire. How to to get the effect I wanted. Um, and I'm, I'm happy with what I decided on, which is mostly just using the airbrush tool um, and some blending. Uh, because I didn't want it to be like flames. Like I didn't want her hair to just be fire, but rather I wanted it to like, emit fire. If you can hear the airplane in the background, congratulations. You have good headphones. <laughs> um, so yeah, I didn't want it to just be fire hair. I wanted it to be more like, it just emitted fire. Like she could be on fire. So that, that made it a little bit more of a process because I know how to just draw fire, um, but this was different. This also means I get to have Tons of fun with the shading. Because <laughs> um, I remember last time with Yogg-Sothoth Senpai that I had opted for um, kind of just my usual shading of like, you know, just lit from the front. Um, and it wasn't spooky. It wasn't exciting. Um, and so I knew I wanted her to be the light source. I wanted her hair to be the primary light source, which meant thinking. <laughs> which meant really having to like, think about how much light she emits and how much of her I wanted to be, like, clearly visible. Um, and yeah, it's tons of fun because her being the light source was really, was a real challenge. It was, it was exciting because trying to figure out how to add this, like, rim lighting in a way that made it, like, so she really pops out, but without it being too much. It was, it was cool. I liked it a lot. I, I hope you like it too. I also decide that since she's got these cool cape tentacle things, that they also emit light. Um, this is me um, fiddling around quite a while um, with the uh, eraser tool, trying to figure out how to get it to work exactly how I wanted. Because I'm just erasing this shading layer. Um, I've got the hardness down and the brush density down a ton because I wanted um, the uh, 
the tentacle tips to be like a soft light. To So, you know, the stuff, her hair gives off a whole lot more light. So it creates more hard lines in its lighting, in, in the shadows that it, it casts. Um, and I wanted to make sure that the tentacles did not fight with that. So lowering that like brush density and stuff on the eraser helps to provide that softer shading that I wanted, um, which is really cool. I think the lighting is the funnest part of the picture than the color of pink. <laughs> um, and yeah, I'm really, I'm really happy with how Cthulhu turns out. This background is also too much fun. I'm so glad that I had a good idea for this one. Cause again, Yaxa thought I was like, what do I do for the background? And I just made it green, pretty sure. <laughs> so I, but I think she, she looks otherworldly. It's like, she's like in, in space, but also in the ocean. And I think she turns out super cool. This red in the background, dude, the cross hatching um, brush in Clip Studio Paint is my new favorite friend when it comes to making textures, cause it's so crunchy, you know? I love it. Um, and, and just, yeah, I'm really happy with how Cthulhu turned out and it was so exciting to finish up, um, or, well, we're not quite done with October. Uh, but to, to return to Love Livecraft for this spooky month. Um, and I hope you liked her too. And that's enough Jabberjohn. Um, have a great day. <laughs>